Guided wave radar, or GWRs, are a modern level measurement instrument that is becoming more prevalent in industry, especially in oil and natural gas applications. Guided wave radars are attached to the vessel to be measured, either directly through a nozzle, or specific chambers are used, usually called level bridles. The instrument works by emitting high frequency electromagnetic pulses. These pulses are conducted along a probe rod that runs into the media we wish to measure. When the pulses encounter the media, they are reflected towards the transmitter and picked up by a sensor. The transmitter measures the time difference between the pulses being sent down the probe to being received, and uses this to calculate the distance the media is from the probe and in turn can give a level measurement. I'm going to discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages as well as show you how to read an echo curve and spot an incorrectly set up GWR. Before I do, if you like this type of content, I would really appreciate you liking the video and consider subscribing if you aren't already. It really helps push my videos to a wider audience who may also benefit from the content. So, thank you if you did. One of the main features of GWR is the ability to measure level interface. An interface level occurs in process systems when two fluids with different densities separate within a single vessel. A simple example would be oil and water. These materials will separate with the less dense oil sitting on top of the water. In an interface setup, when the pulses hit the top layer of the media, some of the energy is reflected to give the upper measurement. However, some of the energy carries on through the upper level and onto the interface level. These remaining waves are then reflected just like the upper level. This signal can then be converted into a level measurement for the interface. Usually around 10 centimeters differential in process fluids is needed for the instrument to differentiate between the two process fluids. But some top of the line equipment can measure down to five centimeter interfaces. Let's look at some of the advantages of guided wave radar over other level measurement technologies. Consistent measurement, even with pressure and temperature fluctuations. No moving parts, so minimal maintenance is required leading to a lower overall cost of the device during its lifetime. Superior interface measurement allowing the output of two signals for a single device. The use of the guide rod helps prevent interface signals that could be caused from the tank construction parts. Some of the disadvantages of guided wave radars are vessels that have actively moving products may put strain or cause movement on the probe that can cause damage or interfere with the signal over time. The initial cost. Guided wave radar is an expensive technology compared to a simple pressure transmitter being used in a level application. Corrosion of probe material can be a consideration in volatile products. Guided wave radars must be set up at commissioning. As part of the setup, engineers and technicians need to see how the transmitter is responding to its installation and to product level. To do this, they use something called an echo curve. The echo curve is a visual graph form representation of the microwave reflection strength plotted over time. The echo curve is usually viewed via a connected communicator such as a HART 475. Alternatively, some manufacturers use a laptop with proprietary software installed during commissioning or fault finding. Here is an echo curve that shows the amplitude of the reflections measured against distance. Examining the echo curve, we will be able to see some clear indications of the start of the probe or reference shown by the first negative amplitude dip. The surface of the product will indicate as a positive amplitude that will be positioned depending where the surface of the product is in relation to the probe. Finally, the last negative amplitude will indicate the end of the probe where the reflections drop off. Let us now look at the echo curve for an interface level as our earlier example of oil and water in a vessel. Here we can see the reflection as the electromagnetic waves traveling down the probe encounters the surface level of the lighter oil. The remaining waves travel through the oil level and are reflected from the water and oil interface. We can see a larger amplitude reflection in the echo curve as a result of its denser properties. I want to now look at a few common setup issues and the resulted problem echo curves you're likely to see. 
During the setup of the transmitter, we will be selecting a dielectric constant of the process fluid and interface fluid, if applicable. The dielectric constant of a medium affects how electromagnetic waves are absorbed over distance. This varies from fluid to fluid. It is essentially the permeability of the substance. The threshold is what determines if a reflection is classed as a level reading or ignored as background by the transmitter. Here is a correctly set dielectric constant and resulting threshold. The threshold is high enough to avoid the noise, but low enough to capture the reflection peak caused by the level. If the dielectric constant is set up incorrectly, the level amplitude threshold will also be incorrect. Depending on the values selected, an incorrect dielectric constant could cause a number of issues. In the first instance, the threshold will be set too high. Looking at a threshold that is set too high, this causes the surface reflection to be ignored, meaning the transmitter will read zero. A threshold that is set too low can cause noise above the product level to be detected as a false level reading. Interface level setups require two threshold settings to determine between the two distinct reflections. Here we can see a correctly set threshold for an interface setup. If the threshold is set too high, an interface level may indicate as the upper or bulk level instead of the desired interface reading. Noise can sometimes cause false level indications by the transmitter. Rough nozzle edges can cause unwanted reflections. Here, in this example, we see a positive indication near the beginning of the probe caused by the vessel nozzle that is being read as a false level. To combat this during setup, we can select what is called an upper null zone. The upper null zone means all reflections up to a set distance from the start of the probe will be ignored. It's worth mentioning that if the product level can get as high as the upper null zone in normal process conditions, then this level will be ignored over the point it meets the upper null zone. If you see a similar echo curve with noise near the top of the probe in the transmitter that has previously been healthy, then it's not always caused by the vessel. This can be caused by product condensation building up at the top of the probe causing the unwanted reflections and false level readings. I've seen this in gas condensate systems where the reading will suddenly shoot up to 100% level. Some model variants have the ability on setup to ignore other static reflections caused by vessel structures. I hope you've learned some things about guided wave radar and now have a good idea how to read an echo curve. Comment down below if you found this useful or have any questions. I always read my comments and try to respond to as many of you as I can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.